Hi, my name is Tolga and I'm going to be presenting on BART, Bayesian Additive Regression Trees. It's a new method that was first published in 2010 and it builds off of similar techniques that we covered in class. So it's defined as being a non-parametric Bayesian regression approach that uses a sum of trees method and it also uses a regularization prior to help work with the data better. Uh, BART can be understood by going over the, the three main procedures. So it has some of trees approach, the regularization prior, and an MCMC algorithm to get the posterior. Overall, we can always use the main fundamental Bayesian, uh, Bayesian understandings and methods that we covered in class to understand BART. Um, so the decision tree uh is just a way of defining binary splits so if we have our data being here like x is less than 80 is a possible decision to be made about the data and then you there's a binary split where that's either true or false and what's important is when you're when you're evaluating a tree t given a value x you always move down and go to the terminal node and that's going to, going to be the value that you have for example if x is equal to 50 here then the terminal node is going to be the first node here and the mu equals 26.2 um, in the sum of trees model instead of having one tree we have multiple trees and then um, so, so we're going to have um, m different trees, t sub j, uh, with each tree having b terminal nodes, and each node is then going to be labeled mu ij being it's the ith node of tree j. So in this case, mu is 26.2, and that's going to be the mean of all of the values here in the observed data that are less than 80. Um, in different cases, it's going to be different values, but it's the mean here. Um, in general, the decision trees are powerful tools in machine learning, so we're just adapting this to a Bayesian framework. And uh, one issue with, with, with decision trees is overfitting, possibly. So having the model adhere too closely to the data, and we can see that if this tree is very long, then it's going to be like x is less than 80, x is less than... Um, uh, 90x is less than 100 and just goes and gets very, very, very small in what it uh, measures. And therefore, keeping the trees small is a goal of this algorithm. But then having a lot of separate trees can lead to high between group variations. So a regularization prior is used to limit the impact of, of each tree. So just going over the sum of trees model, very quickly, we're going to have J trees with each tree J having a set of values M sub J, and these are just the mu terminal node values of that tree. Um, so to evaluate each tree, we're just going to re represent it as G of X given T sub J, M sub J, and this is going to be the value, uh, the mu IJ value that results from evaluating X with, with um, in tree j uh, with the values that it has at its nodes. And the evaluation of x with all the trees is just going to be the sum of, of the g of x in all of the trees. Uh, when we make inferences, <clears throat> we, we, we usually have um, f of x plus, plus epsilon, which is going to be the, be the error or noise term, and epsilon is modeled zero. Uh, is, is, is modeled by a normal distribution centered at zero with standard deviation sigma. Um, in BART, our f of x is going to be the <clears throat> expected value of y, so the mean value of y, essentially, given our, our observations. Um, and we, we, so f of x is going to be an at, an estimate of that, and we're estimating it with the sum of trees model. So we have that h of x is going to be the sum of all of the trees evaluated at x here. And the, uh, the noise term is going to be the same. So the prior, um, pr 
prior that I talked about, the, 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 the regularization prior, the terms are going to be these pairs of tree and their, and their mu ij values and uh, for, for all the trees and sigma. So the prior is, is, is since it's composed of independent components, we can just separate them out and multiply everything. Since each tree is, in, is independent of each other, we can do, um, we can multiply all of those individually and, and sigma is independent of them. And then within the trees, since the mu ij values are independent, we can simply just multiply those. Um, uh, so <clears throat> why we're doing this again is, is to make sure that the individual impact of each tree is not too much. Uh, like we went over in class in Bayesian hierarchical, it's the, it's the issue between uh, within group and between group variation. So we want to limit the between group variation here. Um, and the R package, the paper cites that M equals 200 is when the efficiency of the algorithm of the algorithm plateaus, so that's a, that's a default that we use. The regularization prior for T sub J is um, a bit more complicated than the others. So first we have to we have the probability that a node at depth D equals zero, one, two. So that's uh, zero, one or two branches down the tree is non-terminal. Um, and this is given by previous uh, work in the field as alpha times one plus D to the minus beta power. The paper says that if you use alpha equals 0 0.95 and beta equals two, then it puts more weight on trees of size two or three, puts the 0 0.55 and 0 0.28 probability on these uh, respectively. And that's good because we don't want large trees. Um, so the other parts of the trees, not only the size, is what variable we use to go to the next level of the tree. So for example, if we have a vector as our input, so if we, we have x1, x2, x3, then we want to choose which variable that we use to go on to the next level and make a decision. So at, by x2 greater than 5 or x5 greater than 6. So these types of decisions. And then another part is how these rules are assigned. So which value of A do we use to make the, make the decision? These two parts that I talked about are made using a uniform. To talk about the regularization prior for the mu ij values, we will be uh, using a topic that we covered in class before, the conjugate norm normal distribution, where the mu ij values are going to have a uh, normal distribution with parameters of mu sub mu and sigma sub mu. Um, and then since y is being modeled by the sum of m of these mu ij values, we're going to extend that normal model and put uh, m mu sub mu and m sigma mu squared. Uh, one intuition that the paper gives is that since we're estimating the, the um, expected value or the mean, uh, it's going to be between y min and y max of the observed data with a, with a high probability. Um, so we're going to first transform the data and make sure that the, that the minimum y value is minus 0 0.5 and the maximum y value is, is, is positive 0 0.5 with the, with the data centered at 0. And uh, so this effectively makes mu sub mu equals zero. And then from the normal model, we're going to, we have the definition that the y minimum is m mu sub mu minus k squared of m uh, sigma mu. And since mu, mu, mu sub mu is zero, we simply have this part and y min is, is minus 0 0.5 that we defined above. And therefore that makes sigma sub mu equals to one half uh, k squared of mu. Um, so therefore we have defined our distribution for mu ij being a normal of zero and this sigma that we defined here. This effectively shrinks mu ij to zero, limiting the, the impact of individual trees and therefore limiting that between group variation that we, that we talked about. It's, it's analogous to that. 
The recommendation of the paper is to have k equals zero to make sure that 95% of the prior probability is in the interval of y min and y max. So uh, the prior for sigma uses another conjugate prior, but this is one that we did not cover in class. It's an inverse chi squared. And there are two ways to do this. You can either have a weakly informative prior where you simply use um, <clears throat> the prior as being the sample uh, deviation in the data, or we could do we could run a linear regression on the data and take the deviation of its residuals. So though this is a more subjective approach, it's the one that's recommended. It's analogous to the subjective priors that we that we went over in class. And you can choose different V or Q values. Um, they have three recommendations, conservative, default, and aggressive. Default is usually covers a lot of different applications. Conservative and aggressive are more used if you know that you have data on certain extremes of the distribution. Um, in the grand scheme of things, so in the posterior part of the application, we will be using a Gibbs sampler that's more um, advanced. Uh, so we, so as in with, with other Gibbs samplers that we had in class, we need m minus one variables to calculate uh, a variable that we have. So t sub parentheses j is defined as being all the trees except t sub j, and there's a similar definition for m sub parentheses j. So if we want to make draws of t sub j and, and m sub j, we need to be given values for t sub parentheses j and m sub parentheses j and sigma. So for making draws of T sub J, we, we, we use a more complicated Gibbs sampler using the Metropolis Hastings and, and different rules to either um, increase the tree in size, decrease it in size, or keep it the same and just change the, change the rules inside. Um, so the draw for the MJs are, um, are from the normal distribution that we defined for mu ij, and then this will result if we have k draws in the Gibbs sampler, we're going to have k dependent draws from the posterior. So we're going to have f1 through fk. And then if we take the mean of those, we're going to have an, an approximate posterior mean uh, for f of x given y. So just a short, a short discussion, what we went over is that bar is composed of three things. It's the, the sum of trees model, the regularization prior, and the MCMC algorithm. It is important that we note that each tree only accounts for a small portion of the data, um, and that the posterior calculations are carried out through the MCMC algorithm. That's more complicated. And BART can be less computationally demanding than, than other methods that are present in the field. And it, uh, in order to use BART, we usually use the base trees package in R that's already there. We can use it by BART XY being, uh, being the, the dependent and Y being the independent. And I'm going to compare this with a single linear reg reg regression that we used in lab five, where we did um, predicting e expenditures based on, based on income levels. So we can go through this and the BART is set to draw 1,000 draws of each observed x. And then by taking the mean of these estimates, we get um, the posterior for the x. Um, so just going through the, the results were real quick. The root square mean error for the BART method was, was, it was 0 0.64. And for the single linear regression of 0 0.72. So they're close, but the BART seems to be performing better. Um, and the BART also has much narrower posterior um, posterior predictions, whereas the linear regression from lab five was much wider. Um, so in conclusion, BART is just a different approach for, for analyzing data. Um, it uses the similar framework, priors, likelihoods, and posteriors. And in many applications, BART it has been shown to perform better. And this is the paper that I use. Thank you.